Okay, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the dual enrollment parent workshop. My name is Bobby Martinez, Assistant Superintendent of Secondary Education in Alvin ISD. We're pleased to offer this session today and discuss the many benefits of dual enrollment course offerings. Um, Alvin ISD has a strong partnership with Alvin Community College, allowing students to simultaneously earn both high school credit and college certificate and associate degree credit. Additional information on dual enrollment can be found on the Alvin Community College website and the Alvin ISD website under the Advanced Academics tab. The presentation is being recorded and will be posted to the Family and Community Engagement Parent University Virtual Workshop section of the Alvin ISD website. Please make sure your camera and microphone is turned off during the presentation. We will allow some time for questions um, at the end of the presentation. You are free to type in questions during the chat to expedite this process. Um, and we will end our session today promptly at 12.30 p.m. And if there are any un unanswered questions, please feel free to contact uh, any of the individuals in this call. And so we are fortunate to have um, Iris Hilliard with us to share information with you all. Ms. Hilliard is the dual enrollment advisor for Alvin High School. And at this time, if you would please welcome Ms. Hilliard. Good morning, everyone. My name is Iris Hilliard. Uh, like Mr. Martinez was saying, I'm the dual enrollment advisor here for Alvin High School. So I'm gonna give you more information about our dual enrollment program and what we offer. But before doing that, I just wanna give you a brief Bio, um, biography of who I am, where I come from. So I actually come from eight years of serving the students on the university level with UACL. I was actually enrollment management counselor there. I also earned my bachelor's degree in criminology for UACL and I enjoy being able to provide the support, the guidance to the students to help them discover their own path I, like I always tell my students, I'm here from the beginning to the end to help you be successful on your educational goals. Okay, so let's get started. What is due enrollment? A lot of students, a lot of parents, uh, they don't even know what is due enrollment, so that's why I'm here to explain it. Alvin Community College and local ISD have partnered to have a high school students the opportunity to graduate from high school with college credits and for some students an associate's degree and we even offer certifications as well for our students. So the student has the option where they can get their associate's degree while they're in high school or if they're like, no, I just want to focus on my core classes, they can also do college credits or a certification based on the programs that we offer here. Due enrollment college courses are taught at the high school school during the school day and part of the student schedule. After completing the due enrollment admissions requirements, students can also take classes online or at any ACC campus. And that's correct. Students can also take classes at the college, maybe after school or online as well. Let me give you an example. We are offering the winter break coming up that starts on December 12th. And that course, that's gonna be five weeks long where they can also take courses, not only during the school year, but they can also take courses on the winter break, on summer one, on summer two. We offer many courses as well during the school year as well that they can also take courses. So there's a lot of opportunities where they can still obtain that associate's degree even if they start late, just for you to know. Hey, Ms. Hilliard, um, just real quick. It, I don't see that your screen is, uh, that you're, the slides are being updated as oh. you're talking. So mm -hmm. you may wanna share your, uh, put it in presentation mode and make okay. sure that you're uh, going through each slide. Let me see. Sorry to interrupt. No, that's fine, let's see. Can you see the, the slide right now where it says what is due enrollment? No. No? Hmm. Give me a minute. Right now your home, your your first, your cover slide is showing. Okay, let me see. Let me try it again. I apologize. 
Can you see it now? You're not showing any longer. You're not showing. Or you're not sharing your screen. You may have taken it off. Mm. Okay. It's coming up and now your intro slide is a slide too. Okay. Thank you. Are you able to see this? Why do you enroll Yeah, your cover slide, your first slide is showing there. Let's see. Let's see. So you, Iris, you just need to go to your, um, click on the current slide where you were, mm -hmm. and then in that top left of, of your screen, um, go to uh, from current slide, and that should uh, pick you up on where you need to be. No. Okay, one. Mm. Do you see where it says what is due enrollment? Yes. Okay, 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 okay. So uh, once again, I apologize, but like I was saying, you know, this is what we offer, what is due enrollment. So I'm just going to continue here. Why do enrollment? Just for just to share some data with you, nationwide, 87, 88 percent of the due enrollment students go on to college or university within three years of graduating high school to complete their degree. On average, it takes 57 months for a due enrollment student to earn a bachelor's degree compared to 72 months for a non due enrollment student. And students who took due enrollment classes have a higher scores on the ACT. So this will also share with you, I also want to share with you that whenever you graduate with your due enrollment associate's degree, students that graduate with their associate's degree, uh, instead of doing a four-year degree plan, it's going to be more like two years for them because the classes that we offer here, if they get C or better, it will get transfer as well. You know, just make sure you check with the university your child is planning to go just so they can review everything and you can review everything to determine what are the courses that they will accept. But most of the, our courses here will get transferred with C or better. Prepare for university success. In addition to allowing students earning college credits, and due enrollment provides the student an opportunity to learn about the academic, social, and time management skills needed for the university success. So I will also give the opportunity for the student to be prepared after high school, you know, to go to that university setting, allowing the students to adjust to academic rigors of college and university coursework expose first generation college students to college education and learning experience encourage the development of critical thinking skills so we will give them everything that they need to be ready for the next step and for them it's going to be going to that university that they're wanting to go financially our financial benefits of due enrollment so here there's a, a chart that i want to share with you this is going to be the cost of one three college hour class, okay? So for us, if you're looking into taking a due enrollment course here, it's $105. But if you go directly with the college, you're looking $300, $400 for the same class that your child can take here. If you go to the university and you take that same class that we offer here, you're looking like $1,000 at least and then once again on the university of houston you're making like eleven hundred dollars so there is a big difference you save a lot of money if you have your child to start taking those college courses here okay 
And then why did you choose to be on Do Unrollment? So I actually have a special guest right now here, um, Ms. Amy Chavez. She's actually one of our Do Unrollment students who's planning to graduate already. She's graduating with her associate's degree next year, basically or next semester with her associate's degree. So I'm gonna present you, she's gonna give you more information of why she chose to do Do Unrollment with Alvin High School, excuse me. Hello, I'm Amy Chavez. I'm 16 years old and I'm graduating a year early um, with my associate's degree in general studies. I'm able to graduate a year early with my associates because I've been taking dual credit classes since before my freshman year and I'm very dedicated. I also take classes during the summer so I have pretty much have school round. but you do not have to stress yourself out as much as I did or take as much rigorous courses as I did. If you take a few classes, they all benefit you in the same way. Uh, with the general studies degree, I've gained a lot of knowledge because there's an array of classes you gain. It's basically the foundation of every other degree. And so I've kind of created like a pros and cons of my experience in the dual enrollment program. Money is a big one because our whole world is surrounded by money and money is the basis of everything. I have saved so much money from dual enrollment classes. As Ms. Hilliard said, um, these classes are like $100, $200 versus uh, $1,000. And especially as now as a senior looking at universities and going to university, um, me and my parents really see that difference in the money. I have saved a lot. I've saved my parents a lot. It also gives you a head start you save time because a lot of degrees, if you're going to more um, professional degrees, they do take time. So it saves a lot of time. You gain knowledge and skills. Um, knowledge because in the associate's degree in general studies, you have to take an array of classes to get that degree. And it is the basis of everything. It has science, uh, math, reading, everything is involved. And you gain a lot of skills, including responsibility, multitasking, time management, and maturity. Again, it takes maturity to follow through with these courses and to participate in these courses, but it benefits you and makes you a better person, I think. It also lets you get a taste of what college life is. Um, you get a feel of professors and how rigorous these courses are gonna be, but then again, they also understand you are in high school, um, so they do work with you. And you also network with professors as well. It is a good opportunity. Um, there is some cons. It is time consuming to take these classes. And especially if you don't have the right motivation or responsibility, um, these won't be the classes for you. But that's not saying you can't try them and see what you think about them. You definitely have to have some responsibility when you're taking these classes. And it still does cost money because you have books and classes and lab manuals and things like that. So parents get a taste of what um, money they're going to be spending and students get a taste of how it's going to be like. So it also depends on how often you take classes and what classes you take. You also need to make sure you um, look at what classes will be transferred to universities. Universities, um, don't take certain classes from the ACC um, dual enrollment and some do. So you need to make sure if you want them to transfer over that you look and see if your future in a university will take them. And overall, I am very happy with my decision. It took a lot of hard work and it was very time consuming, but I think I'm overall a better person and very accomplished person. And I'm thankful that ACC has provided me with this opportunity to do so. Thank you, Ms. Travis, for sharing that information. So I just wanted to bring my student, you know, just to give you more information about her experience with doing Roman. And I agree with her, you know, it's a 
get a hit, you know, off the game, save time and money, boost your GPA, spend out for scholarships as well, learn to be successful in college. Like I was saying, I will prepare you for you to be successful in college and for your child. So it's a really great opportunity that we offer here at Alvin ISD. And then what kind of students take the dual enrollment classes to be successful? A student should be highly motivated, like Ms. Chavez was saying, be able to stick to a goal, be able to meet deadlines, have above average grades, pauses, good study habits, and have a high level of maturity. We give you, we give the students everything that they need to be successful, but the, like I always tell my students, they need to meet us in the middle so we can help them be successful on their educational goals. What is the due degree? So here I actually put an example just for you to see an idea of how it will look like, what classes they will take. I usually meet with every new student, with my dual enrollment students from the beginning to the end. I create a four-year degree plan so they can know exactly what classes to take freshman year, sophomore year, junior year, senior year. And if they're students that they're like, oh no, but I'm starting sophomore, junior year, it's a too late, it's not too late. You need to make sure you just, just get in touch with me. So here you will be able to see freshman year, they usually start with the Psych 1300. That's actually a really good class because that class is gonna be about how to be successful in college. And just for you to see, there's gonna be a different classes that they will take on their freshman uh, 10, 11, and 12th grade. So I'm here to help them out to create that plan with them. And then just to name a few transfer of credits, college courses are transferable if a student earns a grade of C or higher. Students to apply to a college freshman are not considered transfer students, even if they earn a full associate's degree. Just make sure you understand that because a lot of students, they get confused whenever they're getting ready to graduate with their associate's degree. They think that they're not considered a freshman anymore on the university level. Just for admissions purposes, they still need to apply as a freshman because they're still graduating that year as a senior and just for admissions purposes it's going to be considered a freshman after they get admitted to the university then they will recalculate the level and then it will be changed to junior senior level but just for admissions purposes they always need to apply as a freshman student okay and then do enrollment and AP, what is the difference? I get that question asked a lot, right? Like a lot of students are like, I mean, what is the big difference? So do enrollment and AP classes are more challenging than traditional high school classes. Both are an opportunity to earn a college credit. The rigor of this classes helps predict the future of the college success. Do enrollment courses are college courses taught at the high school campus by ACC professors. Once in the dual enrollment program, students can take the courses at the high school campus, any ACC campus or online. AP classes are available at the high school campus and taught by a high school teacher. The great students earn on dual enrollment course posts under high school transcript and ACC college transcript. Grades of C or higher will be transferred to students to their college or university that they choose. But once again, always go and check on that university your child's planning to go to see if they will accept those credits. The AP exam also, so whenever a student's taking an AP course, in order for them to get college credit, they need to take the class, they need to pass an AP exam with three or higher just to get that college credit. But if they just take the dual enrollment course, they don't have to pass in any exam. They just need to pass basically the class and they will automatically get um, that college credit. So that's the big difference. With AP, you're not only taking the whole class, but you're taking an exam at the end of the class and pass with three or higher, then you will obtain that college credit. So that is the big difference, just for you to understand what is the difference. How to start college now. So if you're like, okay, 
I really like this program. I want to start this process for my child. So the next step will be to submit an application to Alvin Community College. We have all the information online step by step showing you how to do it. And then they will need to take the TSI. I know a lot of students, especially in middle school, eight graders are now taking TSI for English and reading. So they can also, if they already took it, let me know and I will make sure to obtain their test scores and send it to the college. But that's the first thing to take the TSI to determine if they pass and what college courses they qualify to take on that year that they're planning to start. We also have waivers that they may qualify for their PSAT test scores. The PSAT is taken on sophomore year. Sometimes students take it on June junior year, so they can also qualify to waive it while they're in school. And then with also the start test, we can also review the test scores and see if we can put a waiver that they may qualify for. And there's exemptions as well for TSI. So based on their ACT or ACT test scores, they may qualify to be exempt from basically taking the TSI. So if you have any questions about like the TSI, I will make sure to answer them, but yes. So it's doing the application, doing the TSI, then they will need to complete a due enrollment or orientation that it's also available on the summer and then pay for the courses pay for the books and they're good to go. Steps one and two must be completed by May 4, 2023 to secure a student spot on the due enrollment class for next year. Also note, there's still time right now if they want to take classes next semester, make sure you let them know to get in touch with me and the high school counselor to see if we can make that possible as well or maybe even take classes on the winter break that i was talking about and that will be starting already in december 12. okay and then the tsi once again you know uh for english and reading they need to score a 945 or higher with an essay of five to be considered passing. If they have below 945 with the diagnostic scores of five and six, or an essay of five or eight, that's considered passing as well. On the math section, they need to score a 950 or a diagnostic score of six to be considered passing. And then how to take the TSI. So there's a lot of different options. You can always check with the high school counselor to see when they're gonna offer the next TSI, or they can also take it at Alvin Community College on our testing center. I know they're gonna be closing by next Tuesday, uh, the college, and they don't reopen till January the 3rd, but you can always go to our website on Alvin Community College on the marketplace, like you can see here, and choose to take the TSI. You can either take it at Alvin Community College at the high school, or they even have an option where you can do it online as well. And as soon as they receive basically the test scores, make sure you connect with me so we can review it and determine if they pass the TSI. Another thing that I, I, I also wanna express, a lot of students think that whenever they take the TSI and they don't pass, that they cannot take no due enrollment courses. That's not right. There's classes that they can still take even if they don't pass the TSI, but they just have to take the TSI to be able to take any college courses. Even if they don't pass, there's, I wanna say maybe five or six courses that they can still take even if they don't pass the TSI for English or reading or math, okay? And then remember the pre-assessment. So before they take the TSI, they need to do a pre-assessment activity. Make sure they bring their picture ID if they're doing it in person. At the college, it's gonna be if they have a Texas ID, an Alvin ISD badge, you know, that's okay, but they do need their ID. I don't want you to go and take your child and then they don't have the ID and you will need to reschedule. And just remember, you know, admission steps one and two must be completed by May 4, 2023. But if your child's looking into maybe starting next semester, maybe we can still make it work. Just connect with me and I will be glad to help out.
And that's the end of my presentation. I'm here for any answers, you know, if you want to put it on the chat, if you want to unmute yourself, I will be glad to answer any questions for you. So I have a quick question. Sure. Um, so um, my child is a sophomore. So he's basically in the middle of his sophomore year. Does that mean that he's going to be behind and won't be able to attain his associates before the end of his senior year? No, he can still attain his associate's degree. The only difference is that he's going to most likely take summer courses on summer one and summer two. He can take up to four college hours, so it's still possible. I will recommend you to let him know to connect with me as soon as possible so we can wor work on the starting, you know, the due enrollment, you know, and see if he he can even do winter break if he wants to as well and remember that starts next week but there's a lot of opportunities because we also offer many courses during the school year where it's literally five weeks long and he can take classes on the school year with those many courses as well so it's still okay. possible and he goes to um iowa colony which is a new high school is there any issue with the transferring of credits there to be able to use. It shouldn't be no issues. Uh, just make sure he gets connected with his ACC advisor and just let the advisor know, you know, that he's trying to obtain that associate's degree and they would do a four year degree plan for him so we can start working on him getting that associate's degree. Okay. And then I have one more question. Sure. Um, he has been in AP classes since before he came to high school, but the high school ones specifically. Will he get credit for those or is it still whenever he gets in the program, he starts? So how does that work? So basically what AP courses, any AP courses that they took, like I mentioned, basically they will need to pass that AP exam with three or higher to get that college credit. If they just took the AP or if he just took the AP course, but he didn't took the exam, he's not going to get college credit. But if he did took the exam and he passed with three or higher, make sure you let the ACC advisor know so they can review it and give them credit for those college credits, basically, that he's going to be earning with the AP courses that uh, exam that he took. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi, I have a question. Sure. I have an eighth grader um, that has been doing all AP classes. He already has high school credit, so when he starts high school, you know, he's already starting off with five um, high school credits. Mm -hmm. So my question is, um, uh, how do I get his star test um, scores to be reviewed to see if he can get exempt from TSI or what are the TSI dates before the college actually closes? So um, star test, and thank you for um, giving that information. So I need to be more specific, I'm sorry. For star test, we will be able to waive the TSI for star test uh, that they take on sophomore year. Unfortunately, we cannot use the TIA, basically the star test for eighth grade or middle school, but it's for sophomore year. So whenever he takes that star test, we can review it and determine if he qualifies to waive it on that. And then you can always go to our Alvin Community College website under the marketplace and you will be able to see there you know when it's the next tsi that they offer my understanding that they're still offering right now the tsi all this week and i will make sure to put the link there right now just for you to have that link and just register for the tsi and determine you know when it's the next available TSI that they offer, but my understanding was that they're gonna they were gonna be offering TSI testing all this week. So I will make sure to put that link for you. Okay, and one more question. Um, my child will be going to Manville High School, so I know Ms. Uh, Sobas was the dual credit advisor. Am mm -hmm. I having to deal with her, or am I going to deal with you if I have any questions? So it's gonna be with her. Uh, I believe Ms. Thompson is our new due enrollment advisor there. But yes, you can basically, and I will share all the information of all the ACC advisors with their contact information as well, so you can get in touch with them. So it can be Ms. Silvas or it can be Ms. Thompson. I will say Ms. Silvas just because Ms. Thompson's still on the learning process right now. So if you still uh, want to get in touch with Ms. Silva, she will be the one to help you out. 
Okay, um, so pretty much just go on Alvin um, website and see when the TSI. I have a question. Another, sorry, no, when my no, daughter no. did this, <laughs> she was sent with the TSI. Like she walked in with the paper that the school gave her. Um, mm -hmm. So my son doesn't have that to do the TSI. Are you guys not needing anything from the school other than their ID and registration um, online? Correct. We just need their ID and the registration online. That's all we need for her to take the TSI. I just put the link there. So if you press on that link, it will take you directly to the TSI. You just choose which one they want to take. So if it's only English and reading, you know, you said uh, your child is on eighth grade right now. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I would just recommend for your child just to take the English and reading right now. The reason that I'm saying this, because even if he takes the TSI for math right now, he's not going to be able to take college algebra to his junior year. So really just focus on the English and reading TSI for right now. Okay, so don't even worry about the math until don't he's actually in high school. Right now, yeah, don't worry about the math. Okay, and then once he takes those um, TSI, I know that uh, when my daughter did it, she got the results immediately. Is that still the case? Yes, they will give the results as soon as they're finished. So just make sure you get in touch with the ACC advisor to review it, you know, and determine, okay, yes, he did pass or no, he didn't, and, and to see what classes he can take. Okay. And I know you said uh, he's an eighth grade right now, just for you to know also that just as soon as he's finished with eighth grade, he qualifies to take summer courses on uh, after eighth grade. So right, that's why I'm trying to make sure that um, we're not missing any deadlines. Who is the ACC advisor? Is there anybody particular, or, or anybody's able to help me, or for Mambo High School? Yes. Or, yeah. Because uh, you said the ACC Ms. Monica, Yeah, I will give you that information. I will put it there. I'm actually going to put the ACC advisors of every school with their contact information so you know who to contact. So I will make sure to do that right now. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you. You too. Okay, I have a question. Sure. Uh, my son is also in eighth grade right now. And I mean, he's already taking AP classes or PRP, whatever they're called now. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of got in late to the meeting, but um, so you said the first step will be to fill out the application um, before May 4th? Correct. If he wants to start doing due enrollment for next year, before May the 4th, you want to submit the admissions application to Alvin Community College. And then a lot of students already took the TSI, but if he has not taken the TSI, then he will need to do that. Do you know by any chance if he already took the TSI? No, I, I don't know. So do, can I call his school and find out? Yes, they should be able, the high school counselor should be able to let you know. And but, also you can get in touch with the ACC advisor and we can also see if he already took the TSI at the school as well. Okay, but he's in eighth grade though. He's not in ninth grade. Yeah, I have a lot oh. of middle school students that are already taking the TSI. I actually, oh, okay. like okay. last year, had a lot of students that they took the TSI while they were in eighth grade. I know there's one coming up because I just went to a middle school admissions presentation for due enrollment last week. And I want to say they said it's going to be January or February. So you also might want to get in touch with the high school counselor. If he has not taken the TSI, just to see, hey, I just want to know when is the next TSI that you're going to be offering? If not, you already know that you can also, he can also take it at the college. Okay, so you keep saying high school. So, do I check with his middle school? I'm or sorry, with the middle school, school for for oh, your okay. son. It's gonna be the middle school. I'm sorry, it's gonna be no, the no, it's okay. School. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, so I can contact his school and see. Uh, and if not, he can. I can go ahead and have him take it at ACC. You said correct. Correct, but if you want him to take it like right now, 
Uh, I know this is the last week that they're going to offer the TSI because then the college will be still starting next week on Tuesday and they don't reopen till January the 3rd. But he still has a lot of time to take that TSI. So Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And you yeah. say you're going to be putting like the, the advisors and I just said it. Yes. Okay. I did. So I, I have one more question then. I know with any normal student going to college as a freshman, right, they have to fill out their FAFSA before they can actually be um, admitted. Do you still have to fill out the FAFSA for even um, for the dual credit courses? For dual credit courses, unfortunately, FAFSA is not available. It's only for students after they graduate from high school that they qualify for the FAFSA. But for any students that are in high school, FAS was not available for our due enrollment students. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any additional questions? I have a question. Uh, <clears throat> my son took an AP course at the last high school that he was at, but we didn't get him registered for the test in time. Is there any way that he can still sign up uh, to do the AP test, even though that was last year when he took it? You might want to check with the AP person in charge of that school to see if that's possible, to see if they can, if he can still take that exam. So you will have to contact that school to determine if that's possible. Okay. All right. So I need to contact that school again. Yes. Okay. Yeah, let me jump in there, Ms. Hilliard. So um, I put in the chat, so as each campus has a dual en enrollment advisor, there's also an, an advanced academic specialist at the campus. And so um, you can contact that campus for those AP um, specific um, questions. And we're trying to answer those as we go along. And so what we'll do is we'll also um, do uh, um, an answer to all the questions that were dropped into the chat that we'll also include in the um, link uh, where this information is posted after the meeting. And um, you can email me directly with your AP related questions. Um, I will drop my email into the chat and I can help you or at least connect you uh, to some more information uh, with that. So I just put it in there for you. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon. I have a question. I just I just heard you answering uh, one of the mothers about the child being an eighth grader. And you were saying that there is going to be about a, a TSI test. I had been asking about that test, and they answered me back and telling me that they are still working on the paperwork, and they're the kids are going to get the package, I believe, before Christmas break. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned uh, to the ones for eight, being an eighth grader. Uh, for us to take, for the kids to take the English um, and reading, correct? Correct. And um, is it the same name for the test, like TSI English and reading, or is it a different name than math? No, it's the, the TSI, there's two. There's the TSI for English and reading, and then there's the TSI for math. And what I recommend your child to take, it's only the TSI for English and reading because the math section, uh, that's going to be for that student to take college algebra, but college algebra can only be taken actually juniors. I know they're changing it for sophomores, but there's some requirements that they need to meet in order to do that. But yeah, it will be the English and reading one. So what is the algebra that they're taking right now as an eighth graders? Because they've been taking APA classes and it's an algebra class. Yes, but that like the courses from middle school and our college courses are different, right? Because that's like yes. middle school courses, but college algebra, this is a college level yes, college algebra. That's the difference. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, good morning, I have a question. Yes. Uh, how can students who are in seventh grade uh, start this program? So unfortunately, uh, in order to start this program, you need to complete your eighth grade and then start on the summer. For seventh graders, they're not going to be able to start till they finish their eighth grade and then ca they can start on the summer after they complete their eighth grade. Okay, thank you. Even though if they child uh, have um I mean, my son is in seventh grade, but he took a classes for eighth grade. 
for eight weeks. Yeah, uh, that's just the policy with ACC that they have to complete their eighth grade in order to be on our due enrollment program. Even though, send me an email. What's the, the middle school that he goes for? McNair. Okay, okay. If you want to, you can send me an email and I can look further into that and see what other options I can provide and I will put my email shortly here on the chat. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, I have a question. Um, the phone was kind of muffled earlier, but I did hear, for instance, my daughter is currently at Rodale and she's in eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And so she'll be able to take the, I so I'm going to start trying to get her scheduled for the TSI and everything, um, mm -hmm. maybe for the beginning of the year. And so if I understood correctly, she only needs to take the English and read portion, correct? Correct. Okay. And so if she passed, there's, you know, classes that she can take. And then I think I heard you say, even if, Worst case, if she don't pass, there's still eligible classes that she will be able to take for the summer. Yes, yes, because we offer like learning framework. That's going to be the introduction on how to be successful in college. We offer Spanish one, Spanish two. We offer entry to mass communication. That's going to be another class as well that she can take BCIS, learning about Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, PowerPoint. So there's a lot of other classes that she can take, even if she doesn't pass the TSI. Okay. And then she can probably take it again, maybe the following year or just whenever, you know, we feel like she's ready to yes. take it again. And that's what I do with my students. You know, they focus on taking the ones that they can take right now. And then if they want to the next semester, they can retake it or wait till like sophomore year. So it just depends on the student. What are their personal goals? Okay. And then my very last question, mm -hmm. um, if she's taking it the summer of next, I guess after the school year summer, she'll be finished with eighth grade. Will it be at ACC or will it be at a high school campus? So we just got the confirmation that it's going to be at Shadow Creek High School again. So we're going to offer okay. our summer one and summer two courses at Shadow Creek. I know last year, uh, Alvin High School that provided transportation for our students. I'm not sure about that. I don't know if you know Mr. Martinez, but I know last year we did provide or they did provide transportation. So I'm just waiting to hear more information about that. Yeah, as far as the summer locations, we are not 100% uh, confirmed on our location. Uh, we have to look at um, some of our uh, projects, maintenance projects and things of that nature. Uh, which uh, determine those locations. And so um, last year it was at Shadow Creek, there's a possibility it could be there, uh, but no matter where um, it is offered in the district, we will provide transportation uh, for students who need that. Right. Okay, Thank and you. I'll just go to, it looks like Ms. Andrus has a uh, hand raised if someone, if you wanna go ahead and ask your question, Ms. Andrus. Yes, thank you. Um, what is the score of the PSAT that you need to have in order to have the TSI wave? Yeah, so basically for the PSAT for reading and writing, they need to have a 460 to wave it. And on the math section, they need to have a 510 to wave it. Okay, and then also, is it true that if you take these classes ahead of time, it can affect your ability to get scholarships as a freshman when you um, take, um, dual enrollment classes or come into your freshman year with an associate degree does it affect your ability to receive um, scholarships no that's not true i used to work on the university of houston at clear lake so when i used to review applications you know with the students that graduated with their associate's degree they have a lot of opportunities for scholarships and also whenever you're applying for a university and you are already having your associate's degree it's a better opportunity as well to get admitted to that university that you're going for but you no know, for scholarships you actually have a better opportunity opportunity to get more scholarships for that. And I know some of the scholarships, they also go based on your SAT and ACT. So it just depends on the university that your child is going, but no, it will actually give your child an opportunity for more scholarships that he or she may qualify for. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, Ms. Hebbett? 
Hi there. Um, I joined a little late, and so I was not sure if this was already covered. If my son is in ninth grade mm -hmm. and um, interested in doing credit moving forward, I still do the English do the junior year um, for we don't do math prior. But what are the qualifications or requirements in order to enroll aside from just passing the TSI? So basically, it's just passing the TSI doing the application. And really, uh, that's it. That's the only thing, you know, just uh, doing the application, doing the orientation, making the payments for the books and tuition. And that's it. And also another thing that I want to add, just for all the parents to know, because a lot of students think, oh, I enjoy the due enrollment, I cannot get out anymore. That's not true. If for any reason, you know, you have your child do due enrollment the first semester, but they're not doing really good, they can always get out and then try it again in the future. Okay, I just wanted to make sure, I wasn't sure if I had missed it, if there was some sort of permission or authorization needed by current teachers to enroll or how that worked or if it's based off of his grades now. So I wanted to make sure I had that before I submitted and paid anything. Yes, that's basically it. Just the uh, present, uh, basically the admissions application TSI. It's really simple. We give an opportunity to everyone to be successful under our educational goals. Perfect. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Ms. Hilliard, let's go to Ms. I believe Ms. Brinson is next. Yes. Or, and then Ms. Rivera after that. Hello. I also joined the call a little late. What grade does the dual program start? So do enrollment starts with students that completed their eighth grade and they can start that summer after where they can start taking summer courses, summer one and summer two, they can take up to four college courses, but it can start as soon as, as they finish their eighth grade. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. And now Ms. Rivera. Yes, ma'am. My question is, you were mentioning about the summer courses. Where can we get the applications for uh, to apply for our children? It will be like the, in the high school, or will be in the ACC college? It's going to be on the AC, ACC college doing the application, doing the TSI. I know we don't have our schedule yet for summer courses. I believe it's going to be out sometime in April, but you can start submitting the application now for your child for summer. Where can we get the on the, the web page. yes everything that's going to be on the alvin community college website and i will make sure to put all the steps and all the information that you need on exactly say basically i will show you step by step how to do it so i will make sure to put that link right now in the chat okay so that information that we're going to get it probably soon correct so correct. for the summer Yes, I will make, yes, we will be able to give you more information as we get closer with the schedule of what's going to be offered. But right now I'm going to share with you the link that I will show you exactly how to submit the application to us. Okay. Thank I you. Just, so much. Yeah, I just put it there. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. And who was next? Miss Heaven Hart again. And Miss Heaven? Nope, mine should be done. Okay. Just save the hands down. <laughs> Thank okay. you. I think Miss Kennedy. Kennedy. I'm sorry, I saw Kennedy or, um, or uh, Mitzi. Um, I just okay. had a question. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's actually Will Kennedy, but go ahead, Mitzi. I'll go after you. <laughs> okay, no problem. Thank you. Um, if your child starts the dual credit program and takes classes for it, but then while they're in high school, they, you know, they decide they don't want to continue it. For the classes they already took, they'll still be credited for those at university, right? They just won't receive their degree at the end of the school year. Correct. Yes. If they completed the college course, you know, and they pass it, they still have that on their official transcript and that will be transferred to the university that they plan to go. So if they earn that college credit, it's going to be there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I guess for, I'm just trying to get a handle on the process for eighth graders. Uh, there was an email we got earlier today about TSI testing being in January and again in February. Mm -hmm. And it has complete ACC application, which obviously I guess that's Alvin Community College application that the eighth graders will need to complete. Mm -hmm. 
And then the next thing it has is complete a PAA. What is the PAA? So the PAA, it's the one that they need to take. Whenever you're doing the TSI, you need to take that practice activity first, and then they will allow you to do the TSI. So I think that's what they're talking about. It's like a practice test that they take before taking the actual TSI. And then they will be able to take that TSI. But the reason that you're getting that email, it's because if he is or she's planning to take the TSI, they are required to take that practice test first. Okay, so where do, where do we get the practice test? Where do we sign up for the practice they test? They didn't send you the link with that information, but let me see if I can find it for you. Let's see. A minute. Uh, so I will make sure to find it right now and send and put it on the chat for you. Let's see. Excellent. Thank you. And just to clarify, when you talk about star test waiving, mm -hmm. that is based on the 10th grade star test. Correct. That, okay. Um, and if you got eighth graders that are currently doing geometry and they did algebra one, can they do AP testing? AP testing, uh, that's going to be a high school question that you okay. might get in touch with the school. I just don't want to give you the wrong information on that. No problem. Thank you kindly. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mr. Kennedy, I would say if you want to email me directly on that and then I can look at the course specifically that we're taking a look at and I can give you the answer for that. Thank you, Dr. Martinez. Will do. Yes, sir. I think I see Ms. Brinson's hand if there's another question. Yes. So I have a sixth grader. Is there anything that she should be doing now to prepare to take this dual class? Uh, so right now, what I recommend, because I'm doing this with my daughter, you know, like she's actually taking APA courses and that's preparing her, you know, to be successful in the future with those college courses that she's going to be taking in the future. So that's just a personal recommendation. You can also ask the, high, the middle school counselor to see what classes that might help her, you know, to be ready to go whenever she's getting ready to take that TS, basically that college course on sophomore, or it just depends, eighth grade after they complete the eighth grade, so. And one more thing, mm -hmm. this dual credit, what, what degree will they have once they have finished it? It's gonna be the general studies associate's degree that they will obtain. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Are you going to answer the questions in the chat? Yes, let me go and check. see. Yeah, so what I did is I just uh, copied over all of those questions um, that were put into the chat. And so we'll go through each of those and create a document uh, that answers uh, those questions, uh, which will also be linked with the presentation. Um, and so again, that's in the on the Alvin ISD website. Uh, when you go to the Family and Community Engagement Department and the Virtual Parent Workshop section, um, it's where you can locate uh, the recorded sessions. And so uh, this session will be there. Um, the recorded or the recording of this session, along with the presentation that Ms. Hilliard shared and then we will do an answer to the questions that are on um, that are in the chat can you repeat again where where it's going to be available at yeah so when you go to the alvin isd website um, there is a section there um, when you go to the departments and um, so at the top top tab of the alvin isd website there's a section that says departments you click on that tab and then you go to the family and community engagement link. And in that, uh, there's a left-hand column where there's multiple tabs. There's a parent university virtual workshop section and you'll click that. And then that's where all of the, um, the past recordings and the offerings that we've offered for the parent workshop are located there. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. 
And I was just going to answer for Ms. Rose, can seventh grader who completed AP class to enroll in due credit program before starting eighth grade? Unfortunately, no, they still need to complete the eighth grade to enjoy basically our due enrollment program. And then another one, Paula Solis, I came a little bit late, so I'm not sure if it was asked, how, where do we enroll our child for the TSI exam? Ms. Archie, actually, she's another ACC advisor. She's joining us right now, and she just put the link there with the pre-assessment on doing the basically the TSI online. Thank you, Ms. Archie, for that. So, and Ms. Archie's actually our ACC advisor for Shadow Creek High School. Any other questions? Hey, I'm gonna, one last time, I'm gonna go in and um, copy over the uh, questions that were asked, and I'm gonna make sure that we provide an answers, uh, answer to that in the, um, on the website, uh, which if y'all would probably give us till the end of the week just to get the recording up. I know Ms. Passarella is the one who usually facilitates these, and she's um, currently not um, in district, and so once she gets back, we'll share this information with her and make sure that she and her team um, get everything uploaded where it needs to be. But um, I want to just take this opportunity to thank Ms. Hilliard uh, for jumping in and sharing information about dual enrollment. And I would encourage you all to reach out early, reach out often uh, with your questions because we know it's fast moving and there's a lot of decisions to be made prior to high school and the, um, you know, the college the dual enrollment process. So. Uh, just make sure you reach out uh, and ask your questions. I guarantee you there is someone on each campus or in district who is able to answer and get you connected to the resources that you need. Um, so we are all here to support you all and our students. And again, ACC is a fantastic partner uh, with us. Um, and we're fortunate to be able to provide these opportunities for our students. And it's really neat when you get to graduation, um, you know, our dual enrollment students actually graduate before um, are before they get their high school diploma. So the, the ACC graduation is about two weeks prior to the to the um, senior graduation. And so it's really neat uh, to see those students um, finishing their degree uh, before a lot of their peers have, have even uh, finished their high school diploma. So um, it, again, great opportunity, great program, and we're very fortunate to have it in Alvin ISD. And it looks like we have one last question. We'll allow Mr. Uh, Wynn to, to ask some questions and then we're going to close out uh, the workshop for today. So thank you. Yes, how can I? What is your question? Mr. Tran? Mr. Tran, what is your question? You may want to unmute your microphone if you're um, attempting to ask a question. Yes. Okay, um, so again, we will put this information on the website. Um, thank you to Ms. Hilliard. Uh, please reach out to either one of us and we can either answer your question directly or get you connected to the person that can best uh, support you. Um, but we want to thank you all for joining us um, this afternoon, and we hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You all too. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was amazing. Thank you.
Hay un goleador, Andrés Silva, que está haciendo goles en Alemania. Hay un goleador, Rafael Leao, en Italia, que hace goles y es un factor. Sin embargo, no es el elegido tampoco. Gonzalo Ramos, ¿verdad? El que yo creo que va a levantar la mano, como lo ha hecho también en el equipo de Cristiano, va a ser Bruno Fernández. Bruno Fernández juega de una manera distinta cuando no está creciendo. Toma una responsabilidad distinta, agarra la pelota y es el jugador clave para ir a la vida. Qué lindo es este partido. ¿Vos jugaste este tipo de partido? Comentando la gente. No, fue espectacular, la verdad que soñás con este tipo de partidos de poder estar en el Mundial y bueno, obviamente cuando te toca pasar al cabo y tenés dentro de todo, ¿no? Esas selecciones fuertes que sabés que podés tener menos chance de ganar, sino algo más parejo, te motiva aún más. Te hago esta pregunta, porque como en el fútbol no se puede hacer el segundo gol antes que el primero ni jugar el próximo partido antes de terminar que estás jugando. En algún momento... El jugador vislumbra el camino que viene porque saben que Marruecos está cansado, que es el próximo rival. Y sí, sí, lo, lo, lo ves. Nosotros, por ejemplo, en el 2010 sabíamos que estábamos Corea, después no podía tocar ganas, sabías que se podía llegar a dar, pero tratar de no ir más allá. Sí, obviamente tenés esa sensación linda de decir, si hacemos bien las cosas en este partido, tenemos chance de jugar contra una selección que no es, que no es tradicional, entonces obviamente que... De, de disfrutar de esa manera, pero tratar de no irte mucho más porque eso después te juegan con Otro detalle del partido, querido Manolo. Arbitraje, Nete ya. No, César Ramos. Me gusta, es muy buen árbitro, muy buen árbitro. Esperemos que no tenga problemas. Y se han dedicado mucho a jugar los equipos. En esta fase yo pensé que iban a entrar más fuerte y realmente han sido partidos muy lindos los que hemos tenido. Bueno, es un lindo partido porque Suiza juega bien, porque Suiza está aquí por mérito propio, porque, porque Portugal quiere llegar a cuarto de final. Hace rato que no se... Lo tendremos en vivo desde aquí en cuestión de instantes nada más. Portugal, Suiza, el último que falta en los cuartos de fin. ¿Quieres ver el próximo partido por Telemundo con tus amigos? Solo dile a Siri. Dile a Dani que el próximo partido lo vemos en mi casa. Trae algo de comer. Se ajusta para que estés cómodo toda la noche, ofreciendo 28 minutos más de descanso por noche. Sí. Yeah. 